natural science, grade 9, end of term. That's preparation for your exam. Preparation for your exam. So we are starting with the first question. That is November, question 1. Various options are provided as possible answers to the following question. Choose the answer and write only the letter A to D next to the question number 1.1 up to 1.10, e.g. 1.1B. Right, let's move on to question one. We are saying a fuss is defined as we have A, a push or a pull. We have B, a pull, not a push. We have C, a push, not a pull. We have D, neither a push nor a pull. So from the definition of force, we're saying a force is either a push or a pull. So this gives us our answer as A. A becomes our answer then. So we have our answer as A. That's a push or a pull. Right, now we'll move on to the next question. Use the following diagram to answer question 1.2 and 1.3. A, we are seeing a man that is pushing a force. Uh, then we have B, a boy that is playing a ball. That's throwing the ball down. So that one of gravitational force. Then C, we have two people that are pulling apart the spring there. Then we have D, we are seeing them. And the question say which diagram illustrates a tension force? Which diagram illustrate a tension force? First, you need to know what is a tension force. You need to know what is a tension force. So we are saying a tension force is, we can say it is a pulling apart force. That's a Pulling apart a force, there's tension force. So you can have pulling apart force or you can talk about the stretching force, right? That's tension force. We are talking about the uh, stretching, the strain, stretching force, uh, stretching force. stretching force so now you go back to your diagram you check which one is stretching that's c so definitely we have c as our answer there right so we come on to say 1.1 uh two which diagram illustrate tension force a is saying a which is wrong b is saying b which is wrong c saying c because that's where we are seeing the pulling force so our answer becomes c there then we'll move on to 1.3. Which diagram, which diagram illustrate a contact force? Which diagram illustrate contact force? Right. So a contact force, we're talking about the force that involve the contact. So we have A there. The man is pushing. So the man is in contact with the object. Then we have B. The boy is not in contact with the ball because the ball is already falling down. Then we have C there. There is contact because the uh, two uh, people are holding the spring. So now we are having A and uh, C. So what is our answer? Our final answer becomes D. 1.3. Our answer is D, which is A and see there that's your one mark we move on to 1.14 identify the force pair pair which means we are we will need to locate the two pairs so we're saying identify the force pair where the soccer player's foot hits the ball so we need to understand the force that is exerted by the ball and the force that is exerted by the soccer player so our A is saying force of the ground on the ball. That's 1.4. Force of the ground on the ball. There's no ground there. Force of the ball on the ground. So which means A is out. Then we move on to B. Force of the foot on the ball. Because the ball is landed on the foot there. Then we have force of the ball on the foot. 
which makes this one correct. But let's check again if we have another better answer. Force of earth on the ball. There is no there. Then force of the ball on the earth. Remember the question says force pair when the soccer player's foot hits. So which means we need the force between the soccer ball and the so, uh, player's foot. Then weight downwards, no more foot upwards now. So now we are left with our answer as a B, which means a 1.4 becomes a B. That is the correct answer there. Then let's move on to 1.5. 1.5, an electrical component which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. You have your answers. First, you need to know what is the function of these uh, components. We have first a resistor. A resistor, what is the function of the resistor? We are saying a resistor control current flow. So a resistor, it control, it control control uh, current flow. That's the function of a resistor. Then we have a buzzer. The buzzer converts audio to signal. So we have the buzzer there. It converts. It converts. Converts um, audio to signal that's the function of the buzzer there right then we we'll move on to the bulb the bulb it um produces light the bulb produces light produces light um produces light produces light from electricity because there is a source so it produces light from electricity. That's what we have there. Right from electricity. Then we move on to the cell. To the cell. The cell now produces electrical energy. Produces electrical energy. Produces electrical energy. All right, we'll go back to our question. An electrical component which converts chemical energy into the electrical energy. So we are left with D because D has potential chemical energy that is told in it. So this potential chemical energy is now converted to electrical energy. So we are leaving our answer there is D, that's 1.5, we have D. Then we move on the function of the resistor. If we go back to 1.5, as I explained, that the resistor controls current flow. So let's check our answers. The function of a resistor in an electric circuit, we are saying uh, to provide, that's question uh, 1.6a, it says to provide energy to the current flow. No, that's not it. Then B says to control the flow of current so we are leaving our answer as b okay before we write you go again and check all the answers to measure the strength of current which is wrong to open and close a circuit that is the purpose of a, a switch here that is the purpose of a switch the switch is the one that uh, close and open a current right to measure the strength of current, this one is used with an ammeter, right? I'm just going to put a symbol because uh, that's an ammeter, right? Symbol for ammeter, right? A component for ammeter to measure the strength of ammeter. This is a switch. So to control energy flow, this B becomes our answer for 1.6. B becomes our answer. Then we'll move on to 1.7. A series mm -hmm. circuits. A series circuits. So when we're talking about series circuits, we are talking about the series that has one pathway. There is one pathway. So the first one is a circuit in which the bulbs are connected in parallel. That becomes wrong. Definitely, it's not our answer, this one. It's wrong because when it's parallel, parallel, we're talking about more than one pathway. 
So then we move on to B, provide more than one pathway. For A, current, provide more than one pathway. The fact that it says provide more than one pathway, this one more becomes wrong, right? It becomes wrong, this one. Then provides only one pathway, only one pathway. So C becomes our answer they right so now we move on to 1.8 two identical bulbs are connected in parallel so which one is the bulb there we have this one is our bulb that's our bulb this one is our bulb because you know the components for drawing the bulb so we are saying two identical bulbs are connected in a parallel in the circuit shown below what will happen to the ammeter reading when switch A is opened, all right? So you need to know the things that you need to know are oh, on um, the connection of series circuits and parallel circuits. So we are saying resistors that are connected, resistors that are connected in parallel have low resistance, okay? Hence, there's large amount of current so resistors that are connected in parallel have low resistance and there is large uh, amount of current then here what will happen to the ammeter reading when switch ace is opened so when switch ace is opened which means there is no current that will flow to this bulb there is no current that will flow to this bulb so let's go on to our answers we have the reading will not be affected that is wrong the reading will increase become higher b becomes wrong then we are saying c the reading will decrease c becomes our answer so we are having c is the correct answer there c becomes our answer there right so because we are saying resistance uh, becomes high when open deck, resistance becomes high because we only have one bulb left. So when resistance becomes high, this means a current is reduced. Resistance becomes high, then current is reduced. Therefore, we end up having C as the correct answer there. Let's move on to the next question. Which one of the following circuit components measures potential difference? Let's check our circuit. A there, it shows a cell. This one, it shows a resistor. It shows a resistor. Right. Uh, then uh, C, it, it shows a bulb. C, it shows a bulb. Then V, V, it shows the component that is a voltmeter. So what is potential difference? Potential difference, we are talking about a voltage. This uh voltage right so which component measures so we are left with a d that's our answer for 1.9 that's our answer there then move on to 1.10 identify light bulbs and cells that are used in the following circuit in which circuit will the light bulb glow the brightest so we have um circuit number a we only have one bulb and we have one cell there. We have second uh, one cell, sorry, we have one bulb and one cell. Yes, that's correct. Then we'll move on to circuit number B. We have two cells and we have one bulb thing. Then we'll move on to circuit number C. We have two cells connected in parallel. Then we have um one bulb there. Then we move on to uh circuit d circuit d circuit d circuit d we have three cells connected in parallel three cells connected in parallel then we have one bulb there right so what is our answer when we check very well what is our answer there one point ten are becomes a B because we are saying in which circuit will the light bulb glow the brightest? The answer becomes B there. The answer becomes uh -huh, B. So that's our answer there. Mm -hmm. 
And so answer A, B. Right, okay. Now let's move on to the next question. Multiple choice, you're done, you've collected your 10 marks. Let's move on to the next question, which is uh, question two. This one has a scientific terms. You need to just give us the correct word. So let's get into the question. It's saying, give the scientific term or correct word for each of the following description. Write only the correct word next to the question number 2.1, 2.5 in your answer book. Okay, let's move on to the first one. 2.1, the rate of electrical energy, the rate. So we are talking about the rate, the, the rate, that's the speed, okay? Right, and you know that when we talk about electrical energy, let's move on to energy there, we're underlining the main key words, energy, uh, that's power. Okay, that's power them. Right, that's power. So the rate of electrical energy, this power, is because there is electrical, you are going to write as electrical power, right? It's the way it becomes electrical, electrical power. Right, you can put this in brackets because the main word that we want is power. So it becomes electrical power, right? Then let's move on to next question, question 2.2. The name of the nuclear power station near Cape Town. This one, we know it, it's Cuba. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's uh, capital letter K because it's a place of that. Then Q. Bug, clear bug. Okay, right, that's where. That's it. Let's move on to 2.3. Uh, the type of electricity generated by falling water. The moment you see water, yeah, the moment you see water, you underline water. Water, you know, it's H2, H2O. So the moment you see water, then you know it's a hydro. Okay, so the type of electricity generated by falling water, it becomes a hydroelectricity, okay? So this one was just uh, show you what, and then we're going to right here, it's a hydro. The answer becomes um, hydroelectricity. Because it's coming from water, hydroelectricity, hydroelectricity, right? Because it's coming from water. Right. Hydroelectricity, that's the answer. Then let's move on to 2.4. The device used to step down or step up the voltage. Now we go on to the power station there. We know that the device that is used to step down or step up the voltage is the transformer. So you write your word here, only one word, transformer. There's the transformer. One mark for that. A green and yellow wire in a three-pin plug. Okay, so how many wires do we have in the three-pin plug? So we have the first one, and that is green and yellow. Okay, green and yellow. We have green and yellow, green and yellow. That one is the earth wire, right? We also have the blue wire, so that you can just remember. We have the blue, uh, okay, the blue wire, which is the neutral. The neutral. Then lastly, we have the brown. The brown. That is the uh, live wire. Live wire. So now a green and yellow wire in the three pin plug. Our answer now becomes F. Our answer now becomes F. That's in F wire. F wire. One mark for that one. We are done with question two. 
We are done with question two. We are done with question two. Let's move on to question three. Choose a word from the column a B that matches the description in column A. Write only letter A to J next to the question number 3.1 to 3.5 in your answer book. Right. Before you write anything, you go on to check on these uh, because what I mean do we have the answers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You need to know. What which is which? Right. For example, 3.1, the layer of the atmosphere where weather occurs. The layer of the atmosphere where weather occurs. Right. If you check on the structure of the atmosphere, you pick uh, the words that is something to do with the atmosphere. If we move on to crust, crust, you know, it's talking about the lithosphere. Then troposphere, yes, it is the layer that is found in the atmosphere. Magma, magma is nothing to do with atmosphere. Ecosystem, no. Mantle, no. Stratosphere, yes, stratosphere is found. Lava, no. Biosphere, no. Sandstone, no. Granite, no. So, which means you are left with the two answers, troposphere and stratosphere. This will help you to have a better answer because if you single out all oh, the wrong answers that are not qualifying on the atmosphere, it helps you to have a better answer when you're choosing. So now we have B, the troposphere and the stratosphere. So we are saying troposphere is the first layer, which is closer to the earth. Then we are the stratosphere, that's the second layer where we find the ozone layer, okay? So our answer now becomes B for 3.1 so our answer is b there so we have the layer of the atmosphere where weather occurs that's a uh, b b that's the troposphere that's your answer the next 3.2 the layer of earth which consists of magma molten rock you go on to answer and look for the layers of earth so we have a there as the layer of earth troposphere is out magma is not the layer of earth Right, ecosystem, no. A mantle, no. If a uh, stratosphere, no. Lava, no. We have um the biosphere. We have the biosphere there. Oh, mantle, sorry, mantle. That's the layer of earth there. Then we have stratosphere, uh, lava, biosphere, sandstone. So which means we are left with this, E, and A. Right. Then you go back to your uh, question again. The layer of earth, which consists of magma. Remember, the crust. Now, the crust is lava. The lava that is called a magma. And magma is coming from inside. So, we are left with the answer is mantle. So, we are saying 3.2 becomes the mantle. Mantle. That's E for 3.2. Yes. Then we move on to 3.3. Molten liquid rock, which comes out of the of volcano. From the question 3.2, you can never know the answer here. 3.2, it's saying the layer of earth, which consists of magma, that's molten rock. Then here you ask molten liquid rock, which comes out of the, out of the volcano. All right. So what is the answer for 3.3? Was it molten? comes out okay when it's inside it's magma but when it comes out it becomes what lava so we have our answer is g there for 3.3 3.3 3 .3, our answer becomes g right then we'll move on to 3.4 earth's interconnected web of life including all living organisms and the environment it's interconnected. All living organism, all living, you go and underline the keyword living organisms. Okay. So uh, when we check on living organisms, we are definitely left with the ecosystem here. And we are also having biosphere. But now the keyword that will direct you is all living organisms because we have bio here. Bio, bio. Bio. Bio means life. Okay. Bio means life. So this gives us the answer for 3.4 because biosphere, we're saying interconnected. Whether it's hydrosphere, we are finding life there. Whether it's 
lithosphere, we still find biosphere there. So we find life there. Our answer becomes H for this one. Our answer becomes H for this one. Then we move on to the last one, which is 3.5. A sedimentary rock. A sedimentary rock. Right. Remember, a sedimentary rock is a formed from the deposits of the residues of plant and animal, right? And also the deposits, remember, of the granite, the parts of the granite rock. So that's the second rock from the rock cycle. So we have a sedimentary rock there. I will answer now, granite rock? No, because granite rock now is the igneous rock, right? Then so we are left with I, the sandstone here. So our answer becomes I there. That's the sandstone. You are done with section A, your 20 marks you've collected. Let's move on to the next section, which is section B. Question four, the diagram below illustrate magnetic force, gravitational force, and electrostatic force. Right, so we have the first equation there, it's saying magnetic force. Then the second question there, it's saying gravitational force. Uh, then the last question, that's electrostatic force. Okay, now let's move on to the question that we need to answer. Explain why all these forces are classified as field force or non-contact force. That's question 4.11D. All right, if we check on magnetic force there, if we check on magnetic force, you see that those forces, they are not in contact with each other. The objects are not in contact. Even if you check the gravitational uh, force there, they are not in contact. The object is falling down. Then the balloon, this electrostatics, there are electrons that are generated, protons and electrons that are generated, but they are not in contact. So now when the question says, explain why all these forces are classified as field forces or non-contact force. From the word non-contact, non-contact, you get your answer there from the word contact. So now when you're explaining, you come here to say the objects, the objects, are the objects are not objects are not in contact the objects are not in contact with with each other the objects are not in contact with each other so the objects are not in contact with each other so we're saying this is why we call them field forces right let's move on to question 4.12 what should the paper clip be made of to be attracted by the magnet so remember this magnet uh, needs to uh, get attracted to the uh, steel so basically we use the ferromagnetic okay let me just write it for you mm, we have ferro ferromagnetic ferromagnetic right so the ferromagnetic substances so the ferromagnetic substances, the ferromagnetic substances, right. So what do we have on ferromagnetic substances? You can just write Ag. We have iron. We have iron. We have cobalt. Uh, we have cobalt, and then we have nickel. Nickel. Those are the ferromagnetic substances that we have. Then we'll move on to 4.13. The balloon used to demonstrate the electrostatic force of attraction between the balloons and the pieces of paper has excess of electrons. Right. This before you move on to the question, you remind yourself that electrons are negatively charged, right? Before you move on to the next question, you remind yourself that 
electrons are negatively charged. Then you move on to answering 4.13. That's A. What is the charge on the balloon? What is the charge on the balloon? Choose between positive, negative, or neutral. You go back. Here's an excess of electrons. And remember we said the electrons are negatively charged. So basically now, the charge becomes what? Negative, because we have excess of electrons. It can't be neutral, because neutral we are saying, when it's neutral we are saying, the number of electrons is similar to the number of protons. Then positive will be having excess of protons, right? So our answer becomes negative there. You write your negative. Then let's move on to B. What is the charge on the pieces of paper? What is the charge on the pieces of paper? Right. Remember, the piece of paper has this piece of paper. It has um, donated, it has donated electrons, right? It has donated electrons. Okay. Sometimes. It is donated electrons. So, since it has donated electrons, which means it's either it can donate electrons when it has excess electrons. So, it has donated electrons. So, it can donate electrons when it has excess electrons. Or, it can donate electrons while it doesn't have excess electrons. So, which means we have a situation whereby if it donates excess electrons, then it will remain with the positive, the uh, same number of protons and same number of uh, electrons, which means it becomes neutral. But if it donates electrons with excess, it becomes neutral. But if it donates electrons and then it is left with excess protons, so which means it becomes positive. So here, our answer becomes uh positive or neutral so our answer becomes a uh, positive there or neutral so we have neutral them that's our answer and then we have positive is our answer there right let's move on to the next question let's move on to the next question right an investigation an investigation is conducted to determine the relationship between the mass of an object, the relationship between so let's move on to 4.2 4.2 Right, an investigation is conducted to determine the relationship between the mass of an object and the gravitational force exerted by the Earth on it. Right, so we are now moving on gravitational forces. We're talking about the gravitational forces. Let's move on to 4.21. Name two factors that affect magnitude. You are given the definition of magnitude, that is strength. Strength of gravitational forces. Name two objects. So the two factors that are left here, we have mass and distance. So we have mass. You are just naming. Then we have uh, distance here. Mass, we have distance. Those are the two factors that affect the strength of a gravitational force. Now, let's move on to them. Next question. Let's move on to the next question. Explain the difference between mass and weight. Oh, before we move on to the next question, I just want us to explain here, this 4.21, I'm just going to explain how does it affect uh, the magnitude. So when we have mass, we are saying the greater the mass, the greater the mass, the greater the mass, the stronger the gravitational force. So when we have a greater mass, we have a stronger gravitational force. Then uh, we have when we talk about distance, we are saying when distance increases, the force of gravity also decreases. When distance increases, the force of gravity decreases. So this is how they affect the strength of 
gravitational force. In case you might find a question that explains how, that says explain how mass and distance affect gravitational force, you are good to go. Then let's move on to 4.22. Explain the difference between mass and weight, right? Probably most people don't know the difference of mass and weight, but as a scientist, you should be able to know what is the difference between mass and weight, right? Let's start with mass. Let's start with mass. Start with mass. Mass. What is mass? Mass is, okay, mass is just one. Erasing. our distance right so let's move on to our mass mass is the amount of matter amount of matter amount of matter amount of metam an object consists an object consists an object consists of an object consists consists of right so is the amount of meta an object consists of so we are saying thus mass Amount of matter an object consists of whatever amount of matter is there, that's mass. Then we move on to weight. 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 We are saying weight is the gravitational, the gravitational. Weight is the gravitational force. Gravitational force. The Earth exits. The Earth exits. That um, an object. An, an object. That's it. You are done. Now, let's move on to 4.23. The mass and weight of different objects are measured. The following graph represents the result of an investigation. Now, we have our graph there. We have our x-axis here. That's the mass. And then the y-axis, we have the weight there. So, which means here we have independent variable as mass. Then we have the dependent variable is weight there. Question one. Question A, that's 4.238. What is the weight of the object when its mass is 0 0.1 kg? Right, so you go on 0 0.1 day, you go up, you have 0 0.1 kg, you go up, 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 up. Where the point is joining, you check there. What do you have? One Newton. So you come on to write one newton don't just write one you lose a mark for just writing one so you should write the unit it's one newton right because 0 0.1 go then miss a line at one newton you put your ruler use your ruler put your ruler then you have one newton there okay now let's move on to what is the mass of the object when its weight is 4.4 newton so you go on to the weight there you check where you are having a 4.4. This is 3.5. This is uh, 4.4. So you have your 4.4 there. You take your ruler. You put your ruler. You go in a straight ruler. You go, you go. Yes, up to here. Right, that's where it joins. So have your 4.4. Uh -huh. Then after that, you go down with it, right? So you end up having uh, 0, 0,45, 0, 0,45. So you go on to write your answer. Now this is mass, so your 
your answer will be in cages. So you end up having our answer becomes 0, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Right. Then what is the relationship between mass and weight? If we check very well, you check your graph. If you check very well, you can observe that as you increase the mass, the weight is also increasing. That's the relationship. So which means, in other words, we're saying this is directly proportional. So we're saying as you increase the mass, the weight is also increasing. So when you come to write now, your answer, you say your answer is as mass increases, as mass increases, as mass increases, mass increases, weight also increases from the graph. Weight also. Weight also increases. Yes, so you have found the relationship. As mass increases, weight also increases. So that's the relationship because you see, as we're increasing 0.4 there, you're also increasing the weight. So that's the relationship. So we are saying weight is directly proportional to mass because remember weight is the dependent. So this is the one we are talking about. So weight, the increase of weight depend on mass. So because mass is the independent variable here. Okay, let's move on to 4.3. Elena was instructed to sketch uh, magnetic field lines between the opposite poles of two bars, magnets facing each other. So we have the south pole, we have the north pole, we have the south pole, we have the north pole. So before we go on to the question, we know that the north pole and south pole, these are unlike terms. So there is attraction in between, right? So which means whatever arrows that you're going to draw you should show the force of attraction in between then the learner produced the following incorrect diagram this was produced copy the two bars magnets in your answer book redraw the fields illustrate the correct a field existing between the two diagrams okay so when you are going to draw your diagram maybe i can just draw it here because we have north and south pole so you need to show us. Okay, you are using your ruler to draw. You use your ruler to draw. That's your north uh, pole. Then uh, you have also your south pole because you're only drawing two poles because this one drew, drew one, two, three, four, so forth. So then you indicate this is north, this is south. Then when you are showing, the forces of attraction, you should show that this one and this one on the South Pole, they are connecting here, okay? Because it's force of attraction. So the North Pole is going to the South Pole and then the South Pole is also going to the North Pole. So there is a, a force of attraction there. There is a force of attraction there. Um, there is a force of attraction there. All the arrows should show the force of attraction right all the arrows should show the force of attraction so we are having our force of attraction here force of attraction here you also show the force of attraction right then we have a force of attraction mm -hmm. there is attraction there is attraction mm -hmm. attraction and finally this is how you are going to draw. Then you need to show us the arrow. The arrows are going to the south pole. The arrows are going to the south pole, right? Because there's force of attraction. So you show us the arrows here. That's your diagram. That's the diagram that you need to give us. Okay. Okay. Then let's move on to the next question. A wooden box is placed on a rough cast inclined surface. The wooden box remain in one position and does not slide down in inclined force. So the question is saying, name the force that's preventing from sliding down the inclined force. Remember, this box is going down. So there's a force that is opposing 
We talked about the force that is opposing. The answer becomes what? Friction. That's the opposing force that opposes the objects that are on the plane, right? So here we end up having our answer as friction. You can say friction. Or you can say frictional force. Still the same thing. You can say friction or you can say frictional force. Frictional force. Right, you're done with this one. Okay, now in diagram above, identify the force that is preventing the box from sliding down the surface. Because remember we said the frictional force is opposing. So definitely we are left with the force C because this is the force that is opposing, okay? So we are left with a C here. That's the force that is opposing. That's the frictional force. Okay, you are done with question 17. You collect question 4. You collect your 17 marks. You move on to question 5. An LED is connected to a cell made from one lemon, a zinc nail, and a copper coin. Right. Then we have that one. We have a zinc nail. We have a copper coin. We have an LED there. So the other one is acting as a cathode and the other one is acting as an anode then we move on the first question what is the function of the electric cell what is the function of the electric cell All right remember the electric cell is the source so the source provide what energy so you're going to write for one mark this provide energy for the current to flow the electric cell Provide energy, provide energy for the current to flow. For the current for the current to flow is provide energy for the current for the current. To flow. That's the purpose because we need energy. So the electric cell act as a source. Then let's move on to 5.12. The LED does not light up. Suggest a practical solution to resolve this problem. So we're saying we have prepared our simple cell, but then the LED does not light up. What does this mean? This can mean that we don't have enough a voltage, okay? So this can mean we don't have enough voltage. So what can we do? We are going to add more lemon cells, okay? So this is what we are going to do. We are going to connect. We are going to connect. Connect. More. Lemon. This is a simple cell. So we're using a lemon as uh, the source of energy. So we're going to connect more lemon. This is so that when we connect more lemon, we are increasing the voltage. Then probably our LED will light. If it doesn't light up, which means now we need also more voltage for it to light up. Right. That's correct. So connect more lemon cells. The mark, remember there's two marks. You are marked to this one, connect to more lemon cells. Then there is another mark. How? In series. Is another mark here. You are marked there. Then let's move on to 4.2. When a resistor in an electric circuit heats up, the resistance of the resistor increases. When a resistor in an electric circuit heats up, the resistance of your resistor increases. 5.21 say, name and discuss two other factors. So you are going to name first. You are going to name. Then you are going to discuss. So which means you are naming. By discussing, you are telling us how 
does it affect resistance okay so you are naming and then you discuss that's how you get your four marks so let's move on to them naming we have the length named the length so you have the length here let's just write here length you have named it's one mark for you length then how how does it affect the resistance how does it affect the resistance so we are saying on length the longer the resistor the longer the resistor the higher the resistance or you can say the shorter the resistor the lower the resistance so you can choose here you say the longer the resistor the longer the resistance the higher the resistance the longer the resistance the higher the resistance right done the longer the resistor the higher the resistance okay or you can say the shorter the resistor the lower the resistance right you are done you have explained here then you get another mark so you have collected two marks here but remember you asked to discuss our two factors then you move on to thickness 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 you get a mark here on thickness thickness then what about thickness so we are saying the thinner the resistor the thinner the resistor the higher the resistance so we're saying the thinner the thinner the resistor the thinner the resistor the higher the resistance the higher the higher the resistance okay or you can even say the thicker the resistor the thicker the resistor the lower the resistance you are marked so it's either the longer the resistor or vice versa the thinner the resistor or vice versa you get a mark from that okay then we can also have the type of resistor you can even have the type of resistor that's the third one but remember us two so you just give us two but i'm giving you the third one type of resistor type of resistors type of resistors you can be marked for that then how to explain the type of resistors we are saying generally some metals have low resistance some metals have lower resistance we have lower resistance if lower resistance and some materials have some metals have higher resistance okay so now you have explained that that's explanation so you can also get your mark here that's how you get your four marks you have stated then you have explained you stated and you have discussed so if you're just saying how how does it affect that's how you get a four marks then 5.22 the following circuit diagram are set up we have the following diagram we have <coughs> the board we still we have uh, two cells here we have two cells here we have bulb one bulb here one bulb here but here we have bulb a we have bulb b what is the difference here is the difference on the type of the resistor that are given so here we have necrom wire here we have aluminium wire so then move on to bulb a glows much dimmer than bulb b that's what they give us they say bulb a glows much dimmer than bulb b so the question now asks which resistor the nichrome or aluminium has higher resistance we end up having nichrome because it says the question this statement bulb a bulb a 
glows much dimmer than bulb B. So which means this nichrome has a higher resistance. Because also remember the bulb can act as a resistor also. Because the bulb is also, because it's also using them. It's also opposing the current. So now if bulb a is dimmer than bulb B, which means we have also another strong wire, a strong resistor here, which is a nichrome. So when the question says, which resistor, nichrome or aluminum, has a highest resistance, that's about this nichrome wire because it makes bulb A to glow much dimmer, which means when we have high resistance, we have low current. That's our answer there. So the answer for question one, question A, this 5.22A becomes nichrome wire. That's the answer. Answer becomes nichrome. nichrome wire. Right, we are done with that one. Then the next question, what will happen to the brightness of bulb A if nichrome wire is disconnected from the circuit, cut in half and one of the halves is then reconnected to the circuit. So we go on to the factors that affect resistance. So we're saying nichrome wire is cut into half, so which means we are reducing the length, okay? We are reducing the length. Remember what did we say about the length? We say the longer the resistance, the higher resistance. The thinner, uh, the, the longer the resistance, so which means the shorter the resistor, the lower the resistance, okay? So now here you asked what will happen? So which means we now have a shorter resistor. So what will happen here? We are simply saying, save our answer, the bulb will grow because now there was a higher resistance. So when there's higher resistance, which means the bulb is low current. So now we are having a shorter resistor. So your answer becomes the bulb will glow brighter. The answer becomes bulb will grow brighter. Okay, that's your answer then. Name one example of the use of resistors in everyday life. You're just naming, we find it in elements, elements of the kettle that we use to boil water for tea. We find it in bulb filaments. You did this bulb in grade eight, bulb filaments. So I think you know what is a filament. Then we find it in rheostats. I think we talked about rheostats earlier on. Find it in rheostats. Then we also find it in the motors, we find it in motors. We also find it in light uh, diodes, light, find it in light sensitive diodes, light sensitive diodes. Oh, so that's it. Okay, now let's move on to question six. Let's move on to question six. Uh, question six. Three circuits are connected as shown below. All the bulbs, cells, and ammeters are identical. We have circuit A, A1, circuit B. Circuit A, they're identical, but here we have one bulb. Circuit B, we have two bulbs. Circuit C, we have three bulbs. Okay, right. How does circuit A, B, and C differ from each other? How does circuit A... And B differ from each other. Right. So here you're seeing the number is increasing. So that's what you're going to just say. The number of bulbs in series increase from A, B to C. So the answer becomes your answer becomes the number, number of the number of bulbs. In series, increase because this is a set of circuits, it is one pathway. In series, increase 
from A to B, from A to B to C. You got your mark. You're done with this one. Explain why the reading on Amita 3 will be the will be less. Explain why the reading on Amita 3 will be less than reading on Amita A1. Okay, all right. So we have if you check very well, you see that we have more bulbs. We have more bulbs. We have uh, resistors and series there in circuit C. So we have more bulbs. Therefore, the ammeter reading will be less there. So let's just write the answer that we have more bulbs there. You are explaining. Mm -hmm. Because we have resistors and series. So the bulbs are acting as the resistors, right? So we have more bulbs. So that's why we are saying these are resistors. Resistors in a series. Okay, we have resistors in series. So that's in circuit C, right? We have resistors in series in uh, circuit C. In circuit C. More bulbs, resistance series, and circuit C. Therefore, we have a higher overall resistance. Okay, so we have higher overall resistance. Higher. Higher. Overall. Higher overall. Resistance, so we have higher overall resistance, more resistance in series, so we have higher overall resistance. So what does it mean when we have higher overall resistance? This means that we have lower current, okay? So we have higher overall resistance, therefore, therefore, we have lower current, therefore, lower current. Yes, so that's why that's why we are having small ammeter reading. That's why we have or less ammeter reading in A3 because we have more resistors in series, so which means there is a higher overall resistance, therefore lower current. That's why we are having a small ammeter reading because remember the ammeter is used to measure what? Current. Okay, let's move on to 6.2. 6.2. I studied the circuit diagram below. The reading on voltmeter V1, V3, and V4 are 2V, 7V, and 12V, respectively. Uh, we are checking that these resistors are connected in series, right? These resistors are connected in series R1, R2, R3. Calculate the voltmeter reading on V2. Okay, so you have the first voltmeter, this one, 12 volts. Okay, so which means, remember, uh, when we are connecting resistors and series, voltage is shared. So, which means for us to get V4, right? V4 is equals to V1 plus V2 plus V3, okay? Then the question is asking, calculate the voltmeter of reading on V2. So, V1, you have it. V2. Four, you have it, you're going to substitute here, you have 12 volts is equals to V1, you have it, it's 2 volts, plus V2, you don't have, this is the one that you want to find, V2 plus V3, you don't have, it's, um, you have V3, 7 volts. So which means now you are having an equation, you have your equation now, where you are having 12 volts is equals to, 2V plus V2 plus 7V. So you are going to um you are going to collect the like terms. So you are ending up having a 12. You add this one, 7V uh, plus 2V, you get a 9V. So you end up having 12V. This 9V, when it goes that side, it becomes a minus 12V minus 9 volts is equals to 
vote number two, right? Vote meter number two. So 12 minus nine vote, this give us a three votes is equals to vote meter number two. So calculate the vote meter reading on vote meter number two, which means vote meter number two, you now have your answer, which is three votes. So you will be marked how many marks here, and then the final answer, two marks. Right, let's move on. Which resistor R1, R2? Yes. Yes, the lowest R2 or R3 has the lowest resistance. Which resistor R1, R2 has the lowest resistance? Remember, we said a higher voltage. Remember, we said higher voltage. A higher voltage, higher voltage gives us higher resistance. Give us a higher a resistance, give us a higher resistance. Higher voltage give us a higher resistance. This gives us low current, low current. Okay. Right, now the question says, so which is this R1, R2, O, R3 has the lowest resistance? So our answer becomes what? Which one has got the lowest voltage here? Because higher voltage, higher resistance, lower voltage, lower resistance. So which one has got lowest resistance? That's this one, because this one has got R1, R1 has got lower voltage, okay? because it's measuring two volts. So lower voltage, which means lower resistance. So your answer now becomes R1. You are done with this one. You collected the six marks. You move on to question seven. Question seven. Circuit one and circuit two are connected as shown below. All the bulbs are cells and cells are identical. Explain why the voltmeter reading across Explain why the voltmeter reading across the bulb will be the same. Right, remember this is a parallel circuit. So on parallel circuit, take note that parallel circuits, when, okay, let me just write when, let's write it in full. There's a parallel circuit. So we are saying when resistors, you should take note, I'm just gonna say and B. When resistors are connected, are uh, connected, mm, connected in parallel, mm. parallel, voltage is the same. Voltage is the same. No matter which pathway, okay? No matter which pathway. Okay, so I was saying, explain why voltmeter readings across the bulb will be the same, okay? So what are you saying? You are saying the bulbs are connected in parallel. That's your answer. Because, because you are taking it from your NB, yeah? So your answer will be the bulbs are connected. You answer like... The bulbs are connected. The bulbs are connected. The bulbs are connected in parallel. That's your answer. Because we need to know if you know this type of connection. That's why you see on the diagram it's just written second one and second two are connected. So we need that word Parallel, we need that word parallel connected in uh, parallel. So we need to see if you know, okay. Right, uh, just take note of this one. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. 
take note of the spelling there. But then 7.2, explain why the total current in circuit one is less than the total current in circuit two. Explain why the total current in less in circuit one is less than the total current in circuit two. Here we see that all the bulbs are connected in a parallel, but here we have two bulbs. So we are going to write that circuit one has less bulbs, okay? So circuit one is less bulb. So overall resistance is higher than circuit two. So we are saying your answer becomes 7.2, so it becomes Second one, second one has less bulb, has less bulbs, uh, so therefore, is less bulbs, therefore, therefore, overall resistance is higher, overall. That is parallel circuit, yeah. You need to be careful. Therefore, overall resistance is higher. When we have least bulb, overall resistance is, is higher. That is on parallel circuits. So on parallel circuits, when we have least bulb, the overall uh, the resistance is higher. So this means that Overall circuit in two is therefore more than, so we are saying overall, therefore, which means overall current. This means that overall uh, current, overall current in, this means that overall current in circuit one in circuit one is that overall circuit in circuit one is less than circuit two circuit two All right so remember we said a higher resistance means a lower current so when we have higher resistance and this first circuit which means we definitely have lower current okay then determine the readings of a form A5 and A6. Okay, now on parallel circuit, this is now different. It's opposite on uh, series circuits. Series circuits, we're saying voltage is shared. But now on parallel circuits, now what's the current that is shared? So when you are asked to determine the readings on A4, A5, and A6, Mind the readings on A4, A5, and A6. So, which means you are looking at the main uh, ammeter here. This is the main ammeter because it's connected to the pathway that is connected to the source, okay? To the source, right? So, the main ammeter is saying 3 amps. So, in other ways, we are saying A4, a5 and A6 is going to give us 3 amps. So in other ways, we're saying A7 is equals to A4 plus A5 plus A6, right? And A7 is equals to 3 amps. Then in other ways, we're saying we have 3 ammeters. What are we going to do? We are going to divide these 3 ammeters. So... We are going to divide these three ammeters by three so that we know each ammeter is going to get what. So we have three ammeters. We are now divided by three. So which means we have one amps. So which means the reading for A4, A5, and A6 becomes one amp. Okay. We are done with this one. 7.5. How does the brightness of the bulb in circuit one compare to that of the bulbs in circuit two. How does the bulb of circuit, oh, we forgot 7.3. 7.3 is still the same. 7.3 is still the same. Determine the readings on A1 and A2 is still the same here because here on A2, we are saying we have two amps here. So in other ways, we are going to have A, 
A3 is equals to A1 uh -huh, plus A2. And on A3, we have two arms. Yeah, so we are divided by two, which means it's equal to one. So we also have the same answer here on, because this is a parallel circuit. Our answer here is also one amps for 7.3. Then we move on to 7.5. How does the brightness of the bulb in circuit one compare to that of the bulbs in circuit two? They will be having the same brightness. They will have the same brightness. The same brightness here. We'll be having the same brightness. Okay, you are done. You collect your six marks. You move on to question eight. The diagram below shows an old fashioned fridge and modern energy serving. Fridge, old fashioned is 800 watts fridge, modern 300 watts energy saving fridge. What power rating is the old fashioned fridge? You can just check there. Old fashioned fridge is going to give us 800. Right. So it's 800 watts. Don't forget the units. So it's 800 watts. You're yeah, done. Then convert 300 watts to 1 kilowatt. Remember, we are saying one watt is equals to one kilowatt is equals to one thousand one kilowatts is equals to uh, one thousand watts. One thousand watts. Therefore, what about three hundred and eighty watts? Is equals to more or less? That's less. Okay. So, which means when it's less, we are going to divide by one thousand. So we end up having our answer is 0, 0,38. So it's equals to 0, 0,38 kilowatts. That's your answer, 0, 0,38 kilowatts. So you divide by 1,000. The next electricity is brought and sold in units, electrical energy. Explain what one unit of energy is so when i'm saying one million unit of energy we are saying one kilowatt per hour so we're saying one kilowatt per hour what does this mean we're saying one kilowatt one kilowatt used for one hour for one hour that's it that's um one unit of electrical energy is so it's one kilowatt per hour. So you can be marked this, you can be marked this one. Get marks. Okay. Use the following formula when necessary cost uh, is equal to power rating of the appliance time used in unit of a price. So calculate the cost of the cost to use 800 watts old fashioned fridge for 10 hours if the unit price is 300. So you come here. You substitute your formula to find the cost. So the cost. So we are saying the power rating there. Remember the power rating of an appliance should be in kilowatts. Remember the power rating of appliance should be in kilowatts. Okay. So you are first you convert eight hundred watts to kilowatts. Okay. So we end up having divided by one thousand. You end up having zero command. 8, right? 0, 0,8 mm -hmm. kilowatts times the time used is 10 hours, right? Because you say 10 hours times 10 times 3 times 3. That's the unity price. That's the unity price times 3. What is your answer? What is your answer? 0, 0,8 times 10 times 3 becomes what? Uh, 24. Right. It becomes 24. So the cost, remember the cost is the price. So that's 24 rands. It's 24. 24 rands. Okay. So that's 24 rands. You got the answer. So you're going to be marked here. Be able to substitute the formula and also. Uh, your answer, your final answer. And then the unit, you just write 24, 85. Calculate the cost use on, use, calculate the cost to use the more than 380 watts fridge for 10 hours if the unit price of electricity is $3. So first you need to convert this one. So you are now having 0 0.38 watts. 
0 0.38, 0 0.38 times, we still have 10 hours, uh, times the cost, the unit price, which is 3, unit price, which is 3, 0 0.38, and 0 0.38 times 10, times 3. So what do you have? You punch in a calculator. I believe you'll be having your calculators. You punch in a calculator. You end up having uh, 11 rand 40. Okay. So you see, you get your answer. So you see the benefits if you're using the one that does uh, the old fashioned is costing 24 rand and the modern is costing 11 uh, rand 40. It's 11 rand 40 here. 11 rand 40. Right. Then 8.6 now say so mention two advantages of using energy saving device. Because if you check very well from your calculations, this fridge you're using it for 10 hours and you're paying 24 rand. And this fridge, you're using it for 10 hours or so, but you're paying 11 rand 40. So, which means here you have served something like um, $12.60, right? Yeah, $12.60. So, what are the two advantages we have? Now, we are talking about it saves money. Those are the advantages of using energy saving devices. It saves money. Saves money, well, saves money because it's cheaper. It costs less, right? Because we are saying it costs less. You can say it costs less. You can say it save money. <laughs> then uh, also less electricity is being used because remember that one is three hundred eighty watts. So we are also having less electricity is used. Less electricity. Is used less electricity is used. Then we can also have it reduces the demands, reduces the demands for electricity. It's economic demand for electricity. The demand for electricity. Okay. Now, let's move on any two. Any two there, you get your mark. Any two there, you get your mark. Any two, you get two marks. Okay, let's move on to question nine. The diagram below shows how electricity can be generated. Whenever you are given a diagram, whenever you are given a diagram, whenever you are given a diagram, you need... To analyze the diagram, we need to focus on the diagram. So we have 9.1, provide a suitable heading for this diagram. This is a power station. This is a power station. You can even check here, solution slide team, power plant diagram showing power station. So this is a power station. This is a power station. One mark. What fuel is used? to boil water. Go back to your diagram there. You are told that coal is burned in the furnace. So what is the answer? The answer becomes coal. The fuel. We have a solid fuel there as coal. Coal becomes the fuel. And move on to 9.3. What is used to make the turbine chain? You check also the diagram there. Water is turned into steam, into the boiler okay so what uses the turbine to stem there we have our answer is steam and we'll move on to 9.4 label part four of the diagram label part four remember now we have this is thermal this is thermal because it's from the uh, coal right uh, so now it's converted to electricity what converts is the generator. So part four becomes generator. The answer there becomes generator. Give a reason why this method of generating electricity is not sustainable. Remember, coal is a fossil fuel. So it cannot be replaced. It's not renewable. So it is not sustainable because it will finish. It will replenish. 
So you are giving a reason to say coal because we need to know that you know that coal is a fossil fuel. So coal is a fossil fuel. Coal is a fossil fuel. And it cannot be replaced. And it cannot be replaced. It cannot be replaced. That's cool. And we'll move on to 9.6. Suggest the three alternative methods that can be used to generate electricity, which is sustainable with very little impact on the environment. Basically, the resources that can be used with very little impact on environment are the renewable resources. So you're going to state the renewable resources that we have. We have solar energy. We have solar energy. We have wind energy. We have wind energy. We have wind energy. We have hydro energy that is from water. Hydro energy because these are renewable. They don't have much impact on the environment. We have biomass. Biomass. We also have wave energy. You can use wave energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wave energy. Mm -hmm. So you can mention any three here. Any three, you get your marks. Any three, you get your marks. Then we'll move on to question 10. We'll move on to question 10. Shown below is a tree growing in the soil. Answer the question that follow. Shown below is a tree growing in the soil. Answer the question that follow. 10.1. Name the earth. Sphere composed of soil, rock, and various minerals. The atmosphere composed of soil, rock. The moment there is rock, because we also know that the grass has got uh, soil, but the moment you see rocks, uh, various minerals, what are we talking about now? We are talking about lithosphere. Litho, rock, remember? It means either, okay. So where we find soil, rock, and various minerals, we are talking about the lithosphere. So the answer becomes lithosphere. You're done. Then 10.2. What role does the earth solid surface play in supporting the tree? Supporting the tree, not the tree supporting the earth, it's the earth supporting the tree. So, in other ways, we're saying, how does the tree benefit from the earth? How does the tree benefit from the earth? So, we are saying the roots of the tree are anchored. If you check your diagram there, the diagram shows the roots of the tree are anchored into the soil and it's enabling the tree to stand. So, we end up having our answer as the roots of the tree, the roots of the tree is anchored. The root of the tree is anchored. The root of the tree is anchored by the soil. By the soil. The root of the tree is anchored by the soil and keeps the tree upright and keeps the tree upright upright and you get your mark then 10.3 water in the ground is really important for trees to grow of which sphere is ground water a part of the fact that you see there is water which means it's hydro it doesn't matter where water is it falls under the hydrosphere so your answer becomes Hydrosphere, hydrosphere. Then we'll move on to 10.4. Explain how the air, part of the atmosphere around the tree is involved in its life processes. Remember the tree needs carbon dioxide that is found in the air. Remember carbon dioxide is the composition of the air. So the trees need carbon dioxide from the air for the process of photosynthesis. Because remember, the trees are autotrophs. So for the process of photosynthesis, 
the tree need carbon dioxide. So what I'm going to write here, we're saying the leaves of the trees absorb. So the leaves of the tree absorb. The leaves of the tree absorb carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, from the atmosphere, from the atmosphere, <coughs> atmosphere for photosynthesis, for photosynthesis, for photosynthesis for photosynthesis and release oxygen also there is release of oxygen that can be used and releases oxygen oxygen which supports which supports respiration in animals okay which supports um respiration of other organisms respiration of other organisms other organisms organisms okay so you are getting your mark for telling us that in the atmosphere there's carbon dioxide and then you get a mark for telling us that as the process of photosynthesis is happening there is release of oxygen. Then we move on to question 11.1. .1. We have a diagram of the structure of earth them and provide labels for the layers marked P, R, and S. Of the section where we are having P, R, and S. Okay. All right, before we answer the question, let's just quickly label all everything P, Q, R, S to see if we know. We have the inner core here. We have the inner core. We have the inner core. Then we have well, the um, Q there. We have the outer core. That's the outer core. Um, we have well, the mantle. The mantle. And lastly, the upper part. That is the crust. The crust. Right. So. Provide labels for the layers marked P, R, and S. Now you are going to answer the question here. You definitely say P is the inner comb. P is the inner comb. And then R is the mantle. And then S is the crust. Mm -hmm. And let's move on to 11.2. Consider a picture of a volcano. We have been shown a diagram of a volcano there. Then you're asked, what is molten rock called when found on, on the inside of a volcano? Remember on question one that answer was there. So you simply go on to write the answer. That is magma when it's inside. Okay. You have the answer. Then what type of rock is formed when molten rock or volcano cools down and solidify crystallizes on Earth's surface? This is the first rock, the true rock. This is called igneous rock. It's the igneous rock. It's the igneous rock. Then we have explained why fossils are not found in igneous rock. Why are they not found? Because plants and animals, so in this case we are saying because uh, plants and animals, because plants and animals, because plants and animals, because plants and animals, because plants and animals remain trapped. Uh, they remain trapped because plants and animals remain trapped in in plants and animals remain trapped in the lava or you can say remain trapped in the lava that will be bent off in the lava 
will be. So we are saying these plants and animals that remain trapped in the lava will be bent off. Okay, so that's why we don't find them. They will be bent off due to extreme heat. They will be bent off due to extreme heat. Due to extreme heat. Due to extreme heat. So we are saying because plants and animals remain trapped in lava, will be bent off due to extreme heat. Okay. So that heat will bend all the plants and animals. Then we'll move on to 11.24. Explain what how metamorphic rocks are formed. Okay. So when we are saying on metamorphic rock, we are saying, yeah, we have the igneous O. Igneous, igneous, or sedimentary rock, or sedimentary rock, igneous, or sedimentary rock, igneous, or sedimentary rock, are subjected, um, subjected to high pressure, are subjected to high pressure subjected to high pressure and temperatures okay subjected to high pressure and temperatures and temperatures they are subjected to high pressure and temperatures subjected to high pressure and temperatures they change they change they change into metamorphic rock they change into metamorphic rock into metamorphic rock they change into metamorphic rock All right okay so basically we are saying metamorphic uh it come from the greek word metamorphosis okay which means change so metamorphic means change so the igneous and the sedimentary rock they're subjected to high pressure and temperatures don't they change which gives us a metamorphic rock let's move on to 1.125 which one of the rock type mentioned is an example of um sedimentary rock okay so we have marble here can we say it's marble? No, because marble is um metamorphic rock. It's a metamorphic rock. It's a metamorphic rock. Then we move on to basalt. Basalt now is igneous rock. Mm -hmm. it's rock. Though we always say coal is a fossil fuel, but in this case, coal becomes the answer. Because this is formed from a deposit of plant residues and animal residues. So we end up having coal is our answer. So 1.12, 1.11, oh, so it's 11.2.5. Our answer becomes coal. That's the answer there. You've collected your nine marks. Let's move on to our last question, which is question 12. My last question, which is question 12. Uh, the atmosphere. The graph below indicates the average temperature at the atmosphere at different temperatures, different heights above the surface of the Earth. Later, A, B, C, and D represent the different atmospheric layers. Okay, provide the names of the atmospheric layer labeled A, B, C, and D shown in the graph. Write down later A to D followed by the name of the correct layer okay so let's go on to check what is our a then what is our a a is the layer that is next to the earth so it's the troposphere and we'll move on to b what is b then b from the troposphere we move on to stratosphere stratosphere then we move on to mesosphere, mesosphere, and lastly, we have D, the last layer, which is the thermosphere, 
atmosphere. Look at atmosphere. All right. You get a four marks. You're marked. You get a four marks here. You get a four marks. Okay. Then we'll move on to 12.2. Write down the temperature of atmospheric layer B at a height of 20 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. You go there and you say a height 20 kilometers. There you go. You are using your ruler. There above. And uh, she can use your ruler there. Mm -hmm. And 20, you are using your ruler. Okay. Why does it join the line? When it's joined the line, that's where you get your answer. So our answer there becomes. Minus 60. So the temperature there becomes minus 60 degrees. Minus 60 um, degrees Celsius. Minus 60 degrees Celsius. Minus 60 degrees Celsius. Minus 60 degrees Celsius. This is... No answer there. Right. Let's move on. 1.12.3. Write on the relationship between the height above the Earth's surface and the temperature in the layer B when moving upward from 20 kilometers to 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Write down the relationship between the height above the Earth's surface and the temperature in layer B when moving upwards from 20 kilometers to 50 kilometers above the air surface. What is the, the, the relationship there? We are saying that as height increases, temperature also increases, okay? That's what we are saying. As height increases, temperature also increases. So that's the relationship. So you are going to write this 12.3 12, 12 as, that's your answer, as, a height increases as height increases the height increases temperature also increases temperature also increases temperature also increases that's the relationship there temperature also increases or you can write Temperature increase with the increase of height. You can write uh, temperature. You can write temperature increase. You can write uh, temperature increase. Temperature increase with the, with the increase in height. With the increase in height. With the increase in height, in height, that's your answer there. Let's move on to 12.4. Let's move on to 12.4. Write down the name of the thin layer of gas found in B, which is responsible for protecting living organism on the surface of the earth against the harmful radiation from the sun okay so this is found in b that is the stratosphere so we have the ozone okay the ozone layer okay so we are having the ozone there mm -hmm. we have the ozone the ozone layer the name of the thin layer, that's the ozone layer that protects us from UV radiation. Now, what 12.5 give two negative consequences of the phenomenon known as global warming. First, you need to know what is global warming. First, you need to know what is global warming. We are saying the increase in planets' uh, temperature. Okay, so and brief, that's a brief explanation of global warming. Global warming we are saying increase, increase in the planet's temperatures. In the planet temperatures, 
that's the simplest terms for uh, simplest definition for global warming temperature okay right now we want to know the negative you go on to answer the question this one you're just reviving to see if you know the definition of global warming then to answer the question you are going to state the negative uh, consequences we can have climate change climate change when the temperatures increases that's when we have a climate change we have climate change you asked to name two we thus when we can have uh, severe storms or we can have the melting of ice caps this lead to flooding okay so if we have melting of uh, ice caps this lead to flooding or we can have severe droughts so climate change this lead to severe drought we can have the melting of ice caps there leading to melting of ice caps that is on climate change melting of ice caps melting of ice caps this lead leading to leading to that's leading to floods okay so we have floods thing and then we move on to rising sea levels those are the negative impacts rising sea levels rising sea levels we have food shortages because imagine if we have drought then which means the type of plants that we are um, planting might not be favorable might not be favorable for the certain uh, climate condition that is there so we end up having food shortages we health risks we're talking about things like cancer skin cancer this when we have health risks these are the disadvantages that we have in poverty yes because poverty comes when we are now having food shortages this can lead to poverty now happy ending you are going to revise this you are done revising i wish you all well in your exam uh you should subscribe and like thunder education subscribe and like thunder education for